All right, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. Welcome. Uh, my name is Matt McEwen, and this is Sum Kyu An. Hello. Uh, we are from the uh, we are from the OpenStack Helm Dev team. Unfortunately, uh, JSIC wasn't able to join us today, but we wanted to give you a little bit of uh, insight into some of our lessons learned from engineering uh, complex Helm-based deployments in Kubernetes. Uh, namely OpenStack itself as part of the OpenStack Helm project. There are some lessons learned and some tips and best practices that we think we can share with others who are doing complex Helm delivery. Uh, we will touch on uh, dependency use, reuse of code, configuration, ingress, and logging. So a quick level set, uh, you may know all of this already, but just in case, what is Kubernetes? Kubernetes is an orchestration platform for containerized applications. Helm is a packaging, a deployment manager uh, that allows you to deploy complex applications into Kubernetes. OpenStack Helm is a project of Helm charts uh, that allows you to deploy OpenStack services into Kubernetes for, uh, to get the resiliency uh, and deployability that that provides. And Airship is a new sister project of OpenStack Helm, which uh, provides a Kubernetes-based undercloud as well as advanced Helm-based tooling uh, to deploy applications like OpenStack Helm on top of Kubernetes. So dependency management. Out of the box, Helm does give you dependency management, but it's a little bit basic. Uh, and this is what it looks like on the screen. There are a couple shortcomings with respect to it and uh, what we needed to accomplish with OpenStack Helm. Namely, uh, dependencies are not shared across charts. If you think about wanting to deploy Keystone, right? Uh, you want key a single Keystone to be a dependency of many other OpenStack projects. You don't want to deploy a Keystone per OpenStack project. So that was a, uh, an issue for us. And then also, uh, these dependencies don't allow you to sequence the startup of your, of your uh, charts that you're deploying, meaning you could use it to deploy Keystone before you deploy Cinder, but you can't use it to get Keystone started up before you can deploy Cinder. And that's the kind of visibility that we need to be able to do things like uh, having uh, Keystone available to create the Cinder, data, uh, the Cinder users and endpoints, for example. So what we do is we use the Kubernetes Entry Point project, which comes from the Stackinetes community, which has more advanced dependency management for this type of thing. Uh, and we've created some reusable tooling to make that really easy to use in your Helm charts. So uh, you can see here that uh, in, from the glancevalues.yaml, we define a number of static dependencies for the Glance API to come up. First, you have to initialize the storage in the database, you have to create the, the Keystone users and the Keystone endpoints, and you have to have Rabbit up and running. And once all those things are actually running and healthy, then you can deploy or start up the uh, Glance API. And then down at the bottom, you see how we, uh, part of how we implement that, it's by uh, inserting the Kubernetes entry point as a uh, init container for each of the services that we're, for each of the deployments and services that we're using. Reuse is a very important thing. Uh, we learned as we created Helm charts for each of the different OpenStack services that they all look 95% the same because OpenStack services follow a lot of conventions and do a lot of the same things. So what we've done is we've created a Helm chart called Helm Toolkit, which is sort of a shared library for all of OpenStack Helm. A Helm Toolkit gives you functionality to manage your endpoints very easily, to create full manifests, like full deployments, et cetera, uh, uh, that are very reusable across charts. It gives you reusable shell scripts to do things like uh, create the, uh, the Keystone endpoints for uh, all of your services exactly the same. It gives you um, snippets of GoTPL that you can use in your, uh, your Helm charts. And it also gives you other kinds of utility functionality. So this is something uh, Helm, Toolkit is, is Helm Toolkit is already used outside of OpenStack Helm proper because it does a lot of things that are valuable to Helm charts uh, across the board. Here's an example of, of some of the reuse that Helm Toolkit can give you. Uh, you see a, the, the glance 
job for initializing users in Keystone, and it's four lines of code. Those four lines of code get rendered into about 200 lines of manifest because, again, a lot of that is boilerplate or is exactly the same across different OpenStack components. So having four lines of code instead of 200 saves a lot of uh, maintenance costs, as you'd imagine. Configuration is uh, very important, and we follow a principle in OpenStack Helm that all configuration must be defined through values.yaml and must be overridable so that everything can be overridden by the operator at deployment time. This uh, prevents having to re-engineer Helm charts uh, every time you need to make a change to that deployment and gives us a high degree of consistency and flexibility. Uh, you see an example where the novavalues.conf is uh, reflected in the, uh, is reflected in the YAML structure inside of values.yaml, and uh, we have a helper function that converts that YAML directly into uh, the novavalues.conf. Um, out of box, Helm supports two YAML configuration translation to create YAML-based configuration files, and OpenStack Helm, Helm Toolkit, adds uh, the ability to create Oslo config, uh, INI files, and Kubernetes environment variables. However, there will always be some, some cases where you have some other kind of config file that doesn't fall into one of those molds, and for those situations, we uh, recommend that you simply define those configuration files wholesale in line in your values.yaml, like you can see here for, uh, for our LDAP chart. This uh, leads to some, the downside is it leads to verbose values.yaml files, uh, you know, rather long, right? But the benefit is worth it in our opinion because, again, you have the ability to consistently inject your configuration no matter what it is in a single predictable way. With that, I'll hand it off to Sunkyu. Okay, so from the uh, access app, from outside to the inside, so we should use one of method is the ingress controller. So OpenStack Ham, the, there are two types of ingress controller. The one is the cluster mode, the other is the namespace mode. The cluster ingress mode the, uh, runs the, is uh, host namespace as a daemon set the, on the edge host node. And if you set the VIP, the, you can access to the uh, VIP to into the, the cluster, the API server. And Oh, sorry. And namespace mode is only used the internal services. So uh, namespace is uh, recognized only the ingress in our, the same namespace, and you can in uh, namespace controller runs as deployment type in the the CNI managed network. So you can now access the, from the outside to the inside using the namespace ingress. But the both of use them. The, you can access the first the cluster controller and then pass the, the packet to, and then uh, namespace controller. The lastly, you can access the Nova API or any other uh, OpenStack API server. But if you want the only use the namespace or uh, ingress controller, you can just set the true the host namespace the value. Then you can only the can connect the namespace, the ingress controller to the API server. And logging, the logging is located in OpenStack HAM infra uh, repository. And the, the default architecture is a three tier. As a uh, front bit as a run its own node. And then the front D aggregate from the uh, log from the front bit and then deliver the last three uh, elastic search. So in this example shown is the output configuration is from front B to the front D aggregate server. And you can also change, customize the uh, logging chart, but exact, uh, actually the, you don't need to change the, any other chart, you just override the values. Then you can the, run the only front B and elect search. It's a two-tier, it's a very simple architecture. So in this case, the front D is the output. It's only you set the host to electric, uh, electric search services. Then the logging, the package is, is a, through uh, 
gathering the uh, front bit its node and through the uh, rest to search the directory. So all of the logging chart, all of the containers log is from the gathering. So if you use the Docker, the you can the Docker is up, so all of the logs the like a uh, JSON file. So you can gather the uh, list to search and you can use the Kibana to uh, search in the any of any other the logos. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, any questions? <laughs> No? All right. Yeah. Oh, question, yes. So where do you um, build the containers that actually get launched for the projects? Oh, good, good question. Uh, OpenStack Helm does not build the containers themselves, uh, and we, in fact, try to be as uh, container agnostic as possible. So we support both Cola containers as well as Loki containers, uh, and we have uh, configuration overrides uh, up in our project that allow operators to choose which of those they would like to use. Good question. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yeah. All right. Thank you guys very much for coming. Have a good day. Thank you.